Morning all. I built this stage yesterday, so if I fall through it, I've only got myself to blame, unfortunately. Um, everyone okay? Everyone full of coffee? And we're all uh, looking forward to a good day? Cool. Um, a quick exercise. Has anybody heard of Lord of the Rings? Hands up. Come on. There's a hell of a lot more of you. Um, has anybody seen the movie, watched a book? Hands up. How many of you actually went to go and see the uh, West End play, Lord of the Rings? One person. Wow. How was it? Great. Good? I actually saw it in Canada. A steep preview. Um, you must be one of very, very few. You, uh, to keep hold of that ticket, it's probably going to be worth a few quid in, in the future. Um, it's considered one of the biggest flops in West End history. Twelve and a half million pounds spent on it, many, many months of preparation, and six months later, never to be seen again. Um, there's another way of, of you know, putting on a theatre show. This is a, a small production called Showstoppers. Anybody ever seen a Showstoppers musical? How was it? Very good. So um, essentially it's, it's a, a group of very talented uh, comic performers who every night put on an improvised musical um, you know, based on audience suggestions. Nobody knows where it's going to be set, nobody knows what style of music it's going to be, nobody knows what it's going to be called, but every night they um, sell out to, to rapturous audiences. Been going in Edinburgh since about 2008, um, and you know, it's getting rave reviews, incredibly popular. So you know, these are two wildly, wildly different ways of putting together a, a theatre production. You've got the, um, you know, the, the you know, humongous amounts of research, humongous amounts of production, or you've got the kind of very, very lo-fi way of doing things. It's very similar when you're putting together a, a content strategy for a website. You can you know, put all the effort into doing the research, put together something that's you know, 77 pages and you know, people lord it and, um, and then potentially six months later it's been shoved in the back of a drawer, never to be seen again. Or there's the way where you can constantly evolve what you're doing. You know, take audience validation, take recommendations, have a, a much more active live way of looking at the content that you're producing for your website. Now, if you open up your delegate packs, and I see some of you may have done so already, you may find one of these in there. It's a DIY content marketing strategy workbook, which rolls off the tongue very nicely. Um, so I won't go through the whole thing today, um, but feel free to take it home, scribble on it in your own time. Essentially, what we've done is put together a, a framework for how you can develop audience-relevant, convertible content for your website. It's content with a purpose, and I think that's one of the things that content marketing as, a, as an industry has struggled with. You know, clever people like yourselves, you know, technical people don't always see the relevance of you know, likes, shares, tweets, follows, all that kind of stuff that, that potentially content, PR, social media people are putting forward as, as the merit of what it is they're putting together. So I want to take you through a few basic principles of, of what you can find in this book. First one, ambiguity is your mortal enemy. Mortal's a bit strong, but hopefully you get the point. Any kind of you know, conversion that you're going after when you're putting together content should be singular. You should have a, you know, a finite focus whether that's getting more email news, uh, newsletter subscribers or potentially driving more people to a specific product or getting more people to uh, go to a category page or to come to your event like it is today. The more of these metrics and KPIs that you put towards a piece of content totally distract from what it is that, that you're trying to do. So just have one, one single goal. It's very clear in this instance, kick a ball through a pair of posts. Imagine what the case would be if there was six or seven posts all lined up in a row. Which one would you aim for? You wouldn't potentially know. Each one has slightly less value. And you, know, you may end up missing all of them just because you're so distracted by kind of what's in front of you. So you know, take away all ambiguity. Aim for that one single goal, and chances are you'll hit loads of others anyway as a bit of a bonus, just by doing one thing but doing it very well. 
So, you'll see a lot of analogies here. Yeah, I've got a, a, a rugby post one. The second one I want to introduce is, I see the internet as a lot of little tiny bridges taking you from one place to another. Um, obviously some are, are big bridges, some are small bridges, but everything is kind of directing people across ravines, rivers, lakes, whatever it is, to the other side. Um, here's a bridge. Does anyone know where this is? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Nepal. It's, uh, it's, it's the kind of bridge that, it's not the prettiest bridge in the world, it's not the most expensive bridge in the world, but it's an incredibly valuable bridge. You know, the difference between it existing and not existing is huge. And that's one way that you should potentially think of every single piece of content that you put together. Is it doing the job trying to get from one side of the river to the other? Obviously, what they could have done is built something elaborate, you know, invested hundreds of millions of pounds, put together a, you know, a bridge with bells and whistles, and you, know, you end up with a bit of a white elephant. On the other end of the scale, they could have just put a couple of sticks in the river and potentially done the same job. But you know, A, that's very dangerous, and you end up with people in a ravine. Um, and also, there's you know, the potential that the guy down the street might make their own bridge, a slightly better bridge, and obviously attract all the people that you were hoping to deliver to the other side of the river. As I said, I like an, anal uh, an analogy, so uh, uh, apologies for that. Um, but what I'm trying to get across is the, the concept of cost-appropriate content. So, um, what does that actually mean? That, that means when you see content gaps or content opportunities or anywhere where you think that you know, content should exist on your website, there's certain things that you can do to work out right, how much should we be investing in that piece of content. Obviously, I, I never like the term content gaps because a gap is something that you fill, whereas a content opportunity is a much nicer way of looking at it. It, it allows you to think, right, okay, how can we you know, put together something that can be you know, built to last, actually, actually kind of answer this question and make sure that we are the ones that are, you know, beating everybody else and, and making sure that, that nobody else really has a chance in that space. So, looking at something like estate planning. So, this is an idea that came from talking to my dad. He's about to retire. He's got a couple of properties and has been looking around to work out, you know, should he sell his um, properties? What are the pros and cons of doing so? And he couldn't really find anything that existed on the internet. So, you know, that is a content opportunity in my eyes. So I started looking around for him and couldn't really find any valuable information apart from kind of fact-based estate planning, dull wills, trusts, power of attorney type websites, Investopedia, you know, it's all, all quite bland, you know, for the, potentially something that is very lucrative for the right kind of business. So the calculation that I like to use is working out what it would cost to gather this traffic if you're going to pay for it. So, total size of the market, you take something like estate planning and look at all the relevant keywords that could potentially be kind of tied to that space. So you've got retirement planning, wills, um, inheritance tax, lots of kind of different avenues that could potentially be related back to that singular term. The total cost of getting that traffic for a year through PPC would be about one and a half million pounds. If you focus that in on slightly more targeted terms, so estate planning, estate planning advice, you know, the, the kind of much more um, you know, relevant terms, there's about 75,000 pounds worth of traffic. The annual opportunity of a term like that, based on you know, what we believe you could actually attract via natural search, via content, is about 45,000. So that's about 33% of the 75,000, plus about one, maybe 2% of the total market size. Now, if you really focus in on, on getting the big um, you know, target terms, you're gonna get the spillover. And that's what I was talking about earlier in terms of focusing in on singular opportunities and getting the benefit of, of others. So 
how do we go about actually you know, fulfilling that need and you know, creating the kind of content that people might want in, in, in that realm? So bespoke always beats bog standard. Um, I've just moved into a new house. It's a very nice house, white walls and four bedrooms that I need to fill. But you know, do I go down the Argos IKEA route and just buy furniture, you know, flat pack, nice and easy, it's going to fill everything? Or do I go down the route of you know, finding an interior architect, buying the you know, types of things that I find that I like, that are built to last, that have you know, a sense of identity? And obviously, one option is cheap, very, very easy. The other option is expensive, probably out of my budget but it's so much more worthwhile. And that's what people are scared to do when it comes to putting together content. It's so, so easy to pay a writer to put together a web page, a couple of hundred quid, put it somewhere within your navigation and tick it off as a job done. Obviously, the alternative is quite scary. Create something bespoke. But the results are so much more beautiful and long-lasting. Um, the art of globe making. Does anyone know any globe makers? There's only one company in the whole world that still makes handmade globes. They take about six months to do. They cost about 60,000 pounds. But, and I hope you agree, they're a, a beautiful, beautiful item. You know, if, if you're ever in the market to buy a globe, do you buy the bog standard you know, off, the, off the shelf kind of thing that you can find anywhere, or do you commission these guys? Obviously not every person and not every company has the resources to go for this kind of thing, but I'm sure you'd, you'd agree. This is what people should be striving for. And you know, the reaction that you guys gave, you know, looking at this as opposed to if I just got a clip art picture of a, a, um, a globe and put it up here, is, you know, that's the kind of level of difference that we're looking for between good content and okay content. So you've put together your beautiful thing and everyone's happy with it, you're happy with it, your boss is happy with it, you've showed it to a few people around your company. There always needs to be room for a final edit. Um, so at the end of 28 days later, Cillian Murphy dies. Very, very sad. Um, they took it to uh, uh, you know, test audiences, and that was considered too bleak. So they changed the ending. It turns into one of the most popular British movies of all time. Exactly the same thing happened at the end of E.T. Not Cillian Murphy dying, but you, you uh, get the idea. Exactly the same thing happened at the end of Dodgeball. Just goes to show that just because you, as the content creator, think that you have the right product, you have the right idea, you've packaged it up in the right way, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be palatable to the people that you're trying to sell it to. So always leave room for that final kind of tweak, that final, you know, what might be the most important, important piece of the puzzle is that final, final thing. So, you know, produce prototypes, don't invest all your money and making something super, super polished. Getting something to a stage where you're, you're happy with it, it's ready to show off, and then letting people tear it apart. That's the key to building things that people are genuinely going to want. And obviously, don't be afraid to scrap ideas that, that haven't tested well. So Apple TV is a, a prime example. Um, a lot of R&D was done on taking that to a stage where they were almost about to bring it to market. Um, essentially, the, the market need wasn't there, and they, they've decided that they're not going to produce Apple TVs, purely you know, for the fact that, that you know, there's plenty of other things out there that do the job just as well, and um, the market need wasn't enough, and they've probably saved themselves millions and millions of pounds of wasted effort, wasted marketing budget, um, and you know, move on to the next thing, which I'm sure will be just as good. Oh, sorry. So, seven things in the simplest format possible. Just because you've spent loads of time putting something together, just because you've done all the research, like, put in all the, the hard yards and, and have produced something, it doesn't mean that that's the level of complexity that your users need to see. 
Imagine if you went into a restaurant and, you know, along with your lovely plate of smoked salmon terrine came all the mess that was in the kitchen. You, know, you don't necessarily need to see behind the scenes. You don't need to see the dirty plates. You don't need to see the sweat and tears that, that went into producing the final product. What you want to see as an end user is the simplest, the most palatable version of this content that is possible. And you also need to you know, tell it like it is. Don't serve a shepherd's pie in a pint glass. Um, so this is from a website called We Want Plates. Um, don't know if anybody follows it, but it's uh, uh, you know, a collection of shoes in flat caps and you know, various other implements that are used to serve food. So um, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Also a very good example of social media actually having a tangible business impact. Um, so the year that this was launched, in catering, uh, sales of plain white plates went up by 18%, which is huge. And it just shows that, that this kind of you know, simple idea can actually you know, translate into something that, that you know, reflects on the bottom line. So, Going back to estate planning, as we were talking earlier, it's a relatively dull subject, but um, we thought, we sat, we had a few um, ideas about what kind of thing might fill that opportunity. So here it is. Something that allows you to put in your properties that you own, say how long you have left on your mortgage, and how many dependents that you have, and the calculation is done to work out the future forecast of how much your property portfolio will be worth, and then at certain points in time, so your life expectancy, for example, how much inheritance tax will be and how much per dependent they will be able to get at the end of it. So it's bespoke. Nothing else like this exists anywhere on the internet. It's clean, it's clear, it's simple. Um, and there's a, a very clear conversion as well. So, you know, I've seen this, I want to get more information click and it would take you through to some kind of uh, contact form or, or you know, product explanation or more information for Acme and Co. Um, does anyone want to own up to owning more than one property in the UK? A couple, a couple. Um, so let's do some audience validation. What do we think of this idea? Is it something that you might potentially use? Anybody? I'll take your silence as a massive yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the kind of content that, that um, I, I believe companies should be thinking about. You know, it's, it's far beyond the basic article. And to be honest, it is, um, you know, it contains all the information that somebody might write reams and reams about, but it's just packaged up in a nice, clean, crisp way um, that leads people across that bridge to the thing that it is that you're trying to get them to do. So, summary. Um, focus on single things. Take people from one place to another in the most appropriate fashion. Build it bespoke. Don't just take something off a shelf. Never consider something finished. Leave flexibility for the final edit. And always strip away all the muck and serve it in the most simple format possible. Thank you very much. <laughs>